Hi everybody, um, this is going to be um, response number two to uh, Jujurex videos. Um, so this is part two of, of the discussion that was started with her response to a subscriber. Um, this video, um, I'm going to address the other side of the propaganda issue, which was, um, is, is there an area of witchcraft that is, um, very dark and, um, and it's so dark that it scares people, um, and they go running back to the church or whatever their comfort zone was. Um, to feel safe again. Um, I've already addressed what I thought of a lot of the, the stories that get told. Um, and although I know some stories may be true, or may be true to their perception of what happened, um, that being said, and I'm going to go to to um, the dark side of what she she was asking about. <clears throat> Jude um, pretty much said um, said it correctly that um, there's a light side and a dark side to everything. It's called balance. Um, but light and dark does not truly come under the, the guise of good and evil. Um, to say the dark is evil or um, that would say that your mother is evil. That would say that your goddess is evil. That would say that um, Everything that is the, the divine feminine is evil. The female aspect of the divine is the dark side. The light side is the god. Does that mean that the god is good and the goddess is evil? No. It means that you wouldn't be able to know what light was without the darkness, and you wouldn't know what the, the dark was without light. Everything is in balance and everything is for a purpose. <clears throat> We're coming out of the dark time of the year. The sun is coming back. We're seeing that it's starting to grow. Was winter evil? No. Without a winter, we, the earth would not fully function. It's as simple as that. It serves a purpose. Everything serves a purpose. The dark side of witchcraft serves a purpose. Um, the dark side of magic is not always what it appears to be either. This is the month of Valentine's. Love. All oh, spring is coming, spring is in the air. All that kind of stuff happens, you know, around love. Well, how can you say love is dark? Love is light, love is everything good. Of course it is. No, it's not. There's a dark side to it. Um, a lot of the. Um, Jude used the term fluffy, the fluffy witchcraft, or you know, the light witchcraft, or um, I'm gonna go a little bit further and say the young witchcraft, or the person who is not matured, and I don't care what age they are, will. Um, one of the reasons people come to witchcraft is for love spells. Sorry, I'm thirsty and I'm a little bit of a can. Uh, so, if you are, um, um, let 
coming to witchcraft, let's say, to do a love spell. Most people would think love spells are perfectly benign. They are, they're love, then how could they be evil? A love spell, done the way most people want a love spell done, can be extremely dark and dangerous. You can create out of that some really bad experiences. If you are, okay, let's say here's this young girl and she's madly in love with this boy. This boy Maybe he's noticed her, maybe he hasn't. Maybe he would on his own notice her if she would behave. But apparently, she's going to decide she's going to do a love spell. She knows that she wants this boy. She knows it. How she knows it? I don't know. How does she know it? Um, most of the time, these people that want love spells done or want to perform love spells have not even truly had any conversation with these people or that they're infatuated with and they have confused infatuation um, or lust or um, other um, emotions or desires with love. They've confused the whole issue, first of all. So they do a love spell to bring that person to them and to make that person theirs. What you've done is you've bound a person against their will to you. That's pretty damn evil. That's pretty damn dark. Uh, but you would argue, oh, but I wanted it to be light and fluffy. I wanted him to care about me and love me, but you did it against his will. Maybe he loved someone else. Maybe he was on a path or a destiny and you manipulated it. This is assuming that you have developed enough power to do this and that you have developed enough skill sets to do this. But unfortunately, it doesn't take much skill set to still interfere in someone else's life. That is why one of the 13 goals of a witch is to know thyself. And you should be striving for the wisdom to know what you should dabble in and what you shouldn't dabble in. You do not have to conjure the demons from hell to perform a hex or a curse or um, any other variety of evilness that most people would traditionally consider evil to perform dark magic. A simple love spell can be dark magic. Um, when you're performing it against someone's will, when you're binding yourself to that person, when you are uh, doing that, well, how, how do you say that would play out as dark? Or how would that backlash on a person? It backlashes very quickly, usually. And... Um, Beside the fact that you are stealing another person's will, you are um, interfering in what the universe had in store for them, if, if, if you're strong enough to do that. But we're going to do for the sake of argument that you are strong enough to do that. How would it backlash on you? Well, it'll backlash on once you get him, you find out that you don't want him. And now you're stuck with him. And now you've created a stalker for life. 
Now it's turned to the dark side because if you can't have you, no one will have you. And maybe now you have to protect yourself from the very thing that you bound yourself to. That's kind of how karma works. If you don't think through what you're doing in spell work, if you don't take in consideration anyone's thoughts or feelings but your own, then you are probably going to get yourself in trouble. And these could be spells that the um, newbies could get themselves into and have extremely scary and bad experiences from. And the most part is that they will never take responsibility for what they've done either. They won't say it was ever their fault that this happened. This creation was all of their own making. Because they didn't know themselves, their emotions, or anything else of them, of the makeup of who they were. But they would have the callousness to do that to somebody. And then they suffer the consequences of it. Now, how do you do a reversal? Reversals are considered the dark side. Reversals undo sometimes the damage you do with what you thought was a good spell. What you thought was a light and fluffy spell. What you thought was something that would bring you joy and happiness and create your household and everything else. So what are some other things that could be considered um, sorry, I'm getting hot in here. Um, it's 75 degrees outside, and I do not have my AC on, and Texas is starting to warm up, people. Spring is in the air. <coughs> so, now you, um, are, now you're a mother, and... You've been playing it witchcraft for a while, and you have developed enough skills and skill sets. And your job as a mother raising your children is to um, help develop your children to be productive individuals, um, to um, find their way in the world, um, but when they're young, you have a certain level of control over them because you must for their safety, their security, and stuff like that. But as your children get older, they start getting their own opinions of what that is that they want to do in life. And it may not hold with what you see for them because you've been invested and you're close to your children for so, so long. And you get into where you decide that your children no longer know anything about what's best for them. And you're going to bind them to the path you want them down them. Now you say it is your responsibility and duty as a parent. To do that for your children, to keep them on the straight and narrow so that they become successful and happy adults. But part of what is necessary to become a happy and healthy adult is the ability to explore and to find our way in the world and to make our own mistakes so that we truly know the lessons that we are here to learn and how we can apply them in the future uh, for part of our growth cycle. The overbearing mother that has a little bit of skills in witchcraft can be extremely dangerous and even deadly sometimes to their own children, even though they're doing everything out of love. They're not trying to be 
harmful, but because they didn't know boundaries of what they should and should not do, what they should and should not practice, when they should and should not do certain spells for other people, especially without their permission. It sets up another thing of dark magic, even though it looks light and fluffy and what a mother should do. Or maybe it's because their children have gotten in trouble in school and the mother believes her children innocent victims of whatever was perpetrated against them in school. And sometimes they are innocent victims, but sometimes they are actually the perpetrators causing the problems in school that they are getting. And it is a way of society teaching lessons also when a child is not behaving appropriately in society and getting backlashes from it. Sometimes this is part of necessary growth cycles, but it is never easy for a mother, you're probably a father too, but I'm coming from the perspective of a mother only because I'm female, I'm a mother, and I know these struggles very well. So you say that there is a, and, and mind you, the perpetrator generally is going to be another child. Or a teacher. And of course, we all know that we've all had some bad teachers. There's no, there's no argument that some teachers shouldn't be teachers. But there's also an argument that the toughest teachers are the ones that are the best about teaching the children what they need to know and learn. And being hard on them is not a um, trying to be a punishment, but it is to try to push them to their limits to bring out the very best in the children um, so that they know how to succeed and, and face life with the appropriate skill sets. But you see it as an attack on your child, and you perform an immediate attack against whoever is harming your children. You think you're doing it out of protection. I'm only doing it out of protection. I'm not doing it because uh, they, you know, they started it, they, they drew first blood, they went after my child. Did you really think that through before you perpetrated something against somebody else? Because then you do have karma coming back at you. You you have set in motion some things that you may not have known what you set in motion. Maybe your children have been manipulating you. Maybe you have been the one that doesn't know what's really going on in the world. And maybe you need to be the one that needs to be schooled in some of the things. <laughs> You have to keep all these things in balance. You can't be doing, even some of the light and fluffy spells have dark sides to them. Don't believe this is truly um, um, uh, the dark side of witchcraft, although everything has a dark side, which is my trying to get my point across, is everything is dark, even when you think you're doing something very innocuous. Now there are more advanced skill sets out there in witchcraft. Yes, there are. The making of puppets is one. Now, people find that uh, I've seen a lot on YouTube about making puppets and puppets don't have to be evil and puppets don't have to be this and that and you can do a puppet of yourself and you can do a puppet and, and you know and it can be all um, light and fluffy puppets are a form of a created entity used in place of a person whether it be yourself or someone else You're creating almost like an alter ego out there in the universe of that person. Sometimes it's with their permission, sometimes it's not with their permission. 
It's easy to make a puppet. It's harder to understand the rules of the puppet. Puppets can turn evil and deadly very quickly. They do tend to take a life of their own if the person does not know what they're doing while creating it. And the other thing is, is if you are a sloppy witch, and you say you've made that puppet for all good purposes, because I'm not even going into um, the more evil aspects that it could be used for. Say I've made a puppet for myself, and I'm going to use it to you as an aid in my own healing is a very common use for a puppet that would be legitimate, not for evil, not, you know, not for any ill intent or purpose. But you're a sloppy witch and you don't have, you know, your act together. And you've made that puppet. You put your you put your DNA in that puppet and you've brought that puppet to life and you've done all that stuff. And you work with that puppet. Okay, so what do you do with a puppet after that? Have you put it in a safe place? Have you put the proper work into it to let it go to rest? Did you disband the puppet in a proper manner to where you're not disbanding parts of yourself at that purpose? as you take it apart. Are you destroying the puppet in a proper way to where it doesn't destroy you or the person that you put into that puppet? Are you leaving that puppet unattended and letting it fall into the hands of just anybody? Are you keeping your stuff private, personal, and put away and have you done the spell work to say, when I lay you here and put this cloth on you, you will sleep until I wake you up again? Have you put a protection spell around that puppet to where not just anyone can grab it and do something with that puppet that turns around and affects you or the person that you need? Sloppy witchcraft can also backlash. If you are not prepared to do the proper steps involved from beginning to end on a process, if you know how to build the puppet, which is easy, that's the easy part, the harder part is to start putting in your safety nets. Seasoned witches know what they need to do. Seasoned witches are less likely to have people tampering in their stuff. Seasoned witches don't tell you everything they've done so that you can tamper in their stuff just mentally by thoughts that you're having on what they've done. Keeping silent is a rule for a reason. Learning not to be sloppy is a practice and a skill that needs to be acquired. And doing things such as puppet making is not Witchcraft 101. It really isn't. It can be dangerous, it can be all kinds of things, and it is a form of entity making. That being said, there are even bigger levels of entity. I watched, no, I didn't watch it, I think it was in a book or something, and, and um, this couple who was into witchcraft and everything, and 
and they talked freely about how they created these little entities. And these entities took lives on lives of their own and lived in their house. One lived near the front door, one lived in their bedroom, and one kind of ran rampant about the house. Now these two witches as couple, as a couple, had children in the house as well too. And they found it funny. They found it entertaining. They found it to be like they were pets. But as they described all of the stuff that was going on, you could see that they were talking about a level of escalation in the house. And they had their children there. They had their small children in the middle of them. You can't help stupid. You, you can't. That, beyond a doubt, in my mind, is a completely stupid thing to do. Because that, that couple was not going to think anything about it until a tragedy happened and occurred, and it was likely to happen with their children. Entities, elementals that you create, thought forms that you bring into existence, can create lives of their own, and you need to know how to disband, dispel, and do these things before you bring them in because they grow in their elemental powers. Elementals are not, um, they're not necessarily intelligent beings. They are lower forms and they can create great mischief. And even some of the mischief that they can create can cause serious accidents or accidents that lead to more deadly consequences. The elementals themselves rarely are killers, um, but they can create issues and problems. And if you don't know how to put to rest your workings, every aspect of spell work is important, but most people work on the building of the energy and not the disbanding of it and not the putting it to rest and not to the grounding aspects of it. This is mistakes of the novice. A seasoned witch knows better than to do these things. <clears throat> no person is perfect in their workings or their actions. You can always make a mistake, everyone can. But a seasoned witch is less likely to make with some of these fundamental mistakes that can create massive consequences. So, yes, witchcraft has a dark side. Um, but the dark side doesn't have to be in the depths of bringing up and raising demons. Yes, I suppose people can do that, and they can do, I'm not going to work with a demon. Why would I want to work with a demon? Uh, there is enough demons in this world already, and I don't need to unleash any more on, on this earth. There are ways to fight evil without calling demons to do your work for you. There are ways to protect yourself without calling forth any entity that other than your god and goddess, your angels, your whatever, you do not need to, to have dark forces, you don't have to have dangerous entities, you do not have to create dangerous thought forms, you do not have to um, do certain work that is above your head or skill set. It's not necessary. 
Um, the more seasoned you are, the less need that you have of those things. Um, so this is to talk about more of the dark side of witchcraft, but um, like I said, um, for any spell work that you do, no matter how benign you think it is, that can have a dark side to it. Um, you have to think about everything to do with that spell before you perform it and as you're putting it together. These are the things that you're, the thought processes. You have to be a master at your game when you're doing these kind of things. You have to think about the consequences that could happen. And if that's not the consequence that you want to happen, then you need to curtail it by embedding it into the spell work to more purposely create the desired outcome that you want and that you're after. You also have to know that spell work for another person should not be done without their permission or without their input because no matter how much you want to help somebody else, that does not mean that you are working for their best interest when you impose your will on them. That's evil. That is a form of evilness. Just like you would not like them to impose their will on you to force you to do things that you had not decided for yourself you wanted to do. I don't force anybody to become a witch. I don't force anybody not to be a Christian. I accept people for who they are. So I'm not going to sit out and say, I'm going to convert all the people that live in my backyard right across the way, and they're in a Christian church, and I want them all to be witchcraft. I don't have any desire or need to change their opinion of what they're doing. That is where they are on their path, and that is where they are. I am not the person who is judge and jury and executioner on anything like that. I, I don't feel the need to do that. And if that is the intention in the spell work that you're doing, you are performing a type of evil act against somebody else. And that's why you must have their permission. Even when it is in a bout of healing, because people do not understand that sickness and healing have roles to play in people's lives as well, and you need to have a, you need to have their permission to perform spell work for their aid in healing as well. These are just a few things that. A novice may not think about and may not but may encounter and you might not have to be that skilled on your path or that long in your path to experience a negative backlash that might scare the hell out of you. All you have to do is a simple love spell on somebody and then you can't get rid of them and then you can realize just how serious and dangerous it can be. We've all seen reports in the news all the time about stalkers and about what they can do to their um, victims. Um, so, but when you put a level of witchcraft in there that you've actually created that stalker, it can become very, very scary. And Maybe this may be some of the issues that these witches that have gone back to the church have experienced because they did things that they did not have any business or permission to do, is to perform a spell on somebody else and bind their will. Um, it's a very cruel act to do that, and no matter how you try to justify it. So... These are things that come with experience and time that you understand the true reasons behind why we say it. But as a parent talking to a child, a child does not always understand why mom says, you can't cross the street without me, or you have to hold my hand, or all the things that children just rail against at certain times of their lives 
against the parents' rules and regulations that are there designed because the child is not thinking that maturely yet to where they can understand why the rule is in place. That being said, rules are meant to be broken and removed after you do learn. So, each step of the way, you get to develop more and more on your path, and you get to develop more of the rules that you choose to live by, and less of the rules that are forced upon you. But remember, they're in place for a reason, and not everyone stops to rationally think why there are restrictions and why there should be restrictions. If witchcraft is a is a method of using your will to get what you want, why can't I get anything I want? Well, you can, with the exception of when it starts binding other people. Because with that means that they have people and things attached to them too that are not going to take kindly to you binding their, their person to you when they're not meant to be there. So you have to understand there is backlash and there is karma and it can come at you. There are ways around karma, there are ways around backlash. That comes again with the season witch. And this is all for now. The video is again over 30 minutes. Sorry people, I am trying to curtail my rants. Um, but I hope this helps a little bit on the darker aspects of witchcraft. Um, it can get so much darker, but I think this is all that needs to be said at this time. But everybody have a wonderful day, and blessed be.